The Boston Teachers Union is holding its Back to School Resources Fair on Saturday, September 21st to tell us about the books, ice cream and information along with some promising developments around education funding is the union's president, Jessica Tang. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Jessica. Glad to be here. I, I want to start with, with, with this big story about what's going on at the State House. I know it's only one committee vote, but yeah. uh, this looks good for Boston. It does. So across the state, actually, it looks very promising. Uh, we're talking about $1.4 billion increase in Chapter 70, which is the state aid uh, across the state. And there's, I think, a lot to celebrate based on what we've read so far. Uh, but of course, you know, the details actually just came out about three hours ago, and so we're all taking a very close look at, uh, you know, line by line, what does this really mean, and, you know, how is this going to actually impact places like Boston? Well, this is the first time, I think, since 1993 that the foundation budget has been revamped, and a lot of this is about special education and English language learners. Uh, you know, you're a teacher, you see what this is in, in the classrooms. Uh, what has been going on in all these years about those kinds of students? Absolutely. So, you know, I remember as just reflecting in 2013, going to some of these Foundation Budget Review Commission meetings and, you know, parents and students and educators, of course, coming out and testifying about the lack of funding. And that meant everything from, you know, some of the recent reports around the globe about the disparities where we don't have a full-time uh, guidance counselor or mental health provider or a full-time nurse until we negotiated that into the last contract, uh, but full-time librarians, art teachers, phys ed, and opportunities. And this has been going on for a very long time. And the Foundation Budget Review Commission found uh, in about 2015, actually, that we're underfunding public education throughout the state by up to one to two billion dollars. And so this legislation is very much a response to that commission's findings, uh, but also of what we experience every single day in schools. You know, this is not a surprise to us in terms of uh, the disparities, for example, that was highlighted recently in the Globe between, um, you know, Newton, Brighton High. Uh, this is what we know, and that's why I've been fighting so hard for several year now, years now as part of actually a national movement to fund our future. I was reading those Globe stories. A lot of it is about kids with promise in high school, and yet somehow they don't have a, a firm grasp on what happens after high school. Does this legislation, the State House, help with that problem in any way, you think? It does. Uh, there is actually a provision that specifically is geared towards increasing guidance counselors and mental health providers. And again, uh, one of the things that we can celebrate about this bill is that it does focus on increasing funding, particularly to districts that have high concentrations of low-income students as well as English language learners and fully funding special education as well. And with those funds, I think it's a great step in the right direction, um, but absolutely the next step is to make sure that those closest to the classroom can ensure that the funds go to the places where we need them. So these positions like guidance counselors who right now are not just guidance counselors, they're also um, mental health providers, they're also, you know, parents, they're also, you know, trying to provide all the wraparound services, doing trauma uh, response, when in reality, that's the job of multiple staff people who should be in those schools. When I was growing up, it was not unusual for high school students to be the first uh, generation, at least in their family, to go to college, but a lot of them weren't going to college anyhow, so it didn't matter. Today, I guess, you almost have to go. Well, we certainly need to get those rates up, and, and that's what we hear, that there's a job force, there's, we need a you know, college-educated job force. I do think that there's also much to be said for a very effective vocational track, too, um, and vocational opportunities, and there's a need for that as well. So it's college and career, uh, but the point is, is that if we don't have the guidance counselors focused on what comes next after high school and advising, um, and instead are just trying to put out fires every day, which is really what the experience the counselor shared was, uh, then we do have students who may not have all the preparation they need to not just get into college, but then figure out financial aid or figure out housing or uh, materials and get the support they need to stay in college and actually graduate too. Um, and if not college, what is the other path or another vocational or career path that you can take? This is BNN News. We're talking with Jessica Tang from the Boston Teachers Union. So I want to ask you about uh, the resources event. Uh, this is your brainchild going back a few years. Uh, what were you trying to do? 
Well, when we start the school year, and even during the summer, before the school year starts, uh, something that we had heard from a lot of teachers, and we know this as teachers, right, is that in order for students to increase their literacy, they have to have access to a lot of books. And not just access to books, but books at their reading level, and books with content that, that really they can connect with and that they're really interested in. And that's how you become better readers. And so we had an opportunity to partner with the American Federation Teachers and First Book to bring 40,000 books through this uh, truck partnership, a, a book truck partnership. And uh, so we wanted to turn this into a back to school event where uh, originally we actually started with 10,000 books and now actually we're giving away 45,000 free books. And um, in addition, we have 50, over 50 actually nonprofit organizations, including city and BPS departments that provide resources too. And you know, and it's resources, but it's also fun. So we also have um, games and activities, face painting, uh, the ice cream truck, and um, just music, dancing. It's a good time. I, I know this could be about different grade levels, but go back to when you were growing up. What about your first encounters with books? What was that like? Well, I think that's part of it is, you know, this is very much a celebration of reading and literacy. And um, I was very lucky as a child that I had access to lots and lots of books. And I was definitely that kid who, when it was time to go to bed, was still trying to read in the dark. Um, and, you know, again, as a teacher and humanities teacher, just making sure that every child has that same opportunity to have access to books. Um, of course, the other thing is, when you have a book, that means that an adult can spend time reading it with you, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, is, is you can take your time with a book. It's, it's not like you know, being on a computer and, you know, I mean, did you ever make notes to yourself in books when you were reading about things? Well, if it's an academic book, I probably did take some notes. Uh, but, you know, are the books that we're giving out on Saturday, it's K-0 through high school. And, um, you know, absolutely, we also have tips and bookmarks for how to read with your child, um, how to make sure that the reading level is appropriate for your child. Uh, but what's most exciting to me is the kids are so excited about getting their books. When you're walking around uh, the book fair, you see kids just literally sitting in the middle of the, 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 you know, the hall, just starting to read already. And well, that's, that's the other thing, we thing about books, because uh, it's like shopping, isn't it? <laughs> That you, you, this yeah. is you, 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 you want to grab it, you know, and you, oh, there's another thing over there, you know. And yeah, and that's exactly what the kids do, and it's really wonderful to see. What about touching base with families? Because I think that's the other purpose here, isn't it? Absolutely. So building partnerships with families and helping to bring together parents, community, uh, to also do some education. So, for example, you know, this fight, for example, for the funding legislation that came out today, this started years ago. Um, and when we come together and partner with parents, students, and family, then we're able to share, you know, this is not acceptable, our, our children deserve more, and here's what you can do as a parent to help to advocate for anything from more books in schools to uh, actually having adequate funding for our schools. And so we've been actually sharing information about uh, the Fund Our Future movement and investment in, in public education. Chris, I'm also thinking of your background before you became president of the union. You were doing a lot of community engagement work, weren't you? Yeah, so my, my background is definitely as a teacher, um, but as a teacher activist. So I was doing a lot of organizing work and was proud to help found uh, the Boston Education, uh, sorry, the Boston Education Justice Alliance, known as BEJA, with other community parent student groups, and that actually grew into the Massachusetts Education Justice Alliance too, which is actually where the Fund Our Future campaign is housed. And organizing is at the heart of what we do: movement building and really fighting together to make sure our students get what they deserve. And, and talk about the movement building because I remember when uh, uh, Sonia Chang Diaz held a press conference at the beginning of the year. Uh, uh, shortly after she had been chairing the Education Committee, uh, there was quite an impressive array of people. I think you were there, Mayor yeah. Walsh was there. I mean, that was a real masterpiece of organizing too, wasn't it? I, yeah, and I think that's when we win, right? Uh, is when uh, the parents, the students, the teachers, uh, the the city, the mayor, the leadership, uh, the superintendent, school committee, city council, we are all on the same page on this funding issue, for example. Uh, and when we are all on the same page and we come together, then our voices really are heard. And that is the importance of organizing. 
We should mention uh, about the, the resources uh, fair. This is going to be on Saturday. This is over at your BTU headquarters near the water. So can we get a little more particular? Yes. So it's 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. And uh, there are going to be over 45,000 free books again. Uh, there is free parking. Um, it's supposed to be a beautiful day on Saturday, maybe one of our best weekends of the summer, at the end of the summer. And uh, we're right by Carson Beach. And so it's also right off of the JFK UMass T-stop. Great. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Jessica Tang from the Boston Teachers Union.